polyps, 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 everybody would have heard about it. Some of you probably had it via some screening test, but then what are these polyps? What do you do with this? It's basically a bunch of tissue that's collected in one place over another. A lot of people tend to have uh, health screening tests and had an ultrasound and they found they have cold bladder polyps. What do you do with this cold bladder polyps? Don't panic. Relax. 95% of these polyps are benign. They don't become anything, they don't do anything. But the thing to remember is this, is that within this 5%, there could be a nasty that's sitting. And when I mean a nasty, I mean a cancer. And often when you find these cancers, it's often too late. But it doesn't mean you go and drop out your gallbladder every time somebody finds a polyp or anything like that. There are very clear guidelines that are made for this. For example, if the polyp is of one centimeter or more, or you have lots of symptoms, then you probably need surgery. Or if it's between six to nine millimeters and you have risk factors, then you need surgery. Everything else, you need monitoring, observation by way of ultrasound. If six months annually, can be up to five years. So, about gallbladder polyps, one step at a time. See what you got, how many, match it with the risk factors, then you decide what to do. You're not sure, ask your doctor. Now we move to a different polyp, for example, a gastric polyp, a stomach polyp, that you probably don't even know you have because they often have no symptoms. And if they do, sometimes with pain or bleeding, but it's also rare. Firstly, gastric polyps are rare, number one. Secondly, they often tend to happen with injury to the stomach, which is what people say they get gastric pain, gastritis. Then you often get this polyp called a hyperplastic polyp, which is common, but rarely ever turns to cancer. The more uncommon one, which are things like adenomas, are more dangerous and can become cancers, but they are rare. Then you can get a different type of polyp called a fundi gland polyp, which is associated with anti-acid medicines, particularly PPIs. Now, what to take from this is this, is that if you had a polyp, Make sure a sample has been taken because the type of polyp you have will dictate what happens next or whether anything needs doing and if nothing else alleviates any particular worry that you may have. The third example I'm going to use for polyps is actually probably the most important, one of the most important is colonic polyps. Now colon polyps, the two main groups is non-cancerous and cancerous. Of course the cancerous, what I mean with it is potentially becoming cancers. These are adenoma, associated type polyps. Now why is this important is because Polyps can be picked up for all sorts of different reasons. We've had a colonoscopy for, for one reason, another polyp is picked up. The type of polyp that is there will dictate what happens next. Certain types of polyps have the potency of becoming a cancer. In those polyps, you need to know and you need to make sure it has been removed properly. Not half, not a sample removed half. Even if the sample was taken and it shows it's that type of polyp, it must go back and it must be removed because for as long as it's there, it has a chance of becoming a cancer in the future. Now, once that polyp is removed, then you know what type of polyp, the next step is to plan when the next one will be. Now, that would be decided by the type of polyp it is. Again, the type is very important. The size of it and the number. And these are international guidelines also telling you that based on these factors, when you need your next one and what your risk are. Now, of course, you could say, oh, I'll have a colonoscopy every year. No, don't do that because there are risks with any colonoscopies that you do and don't take unnecessary risk unless you don't need to. Hence, this is why these guidelines are there. And with colon cancer being such uh, one of the top cancers that's out there, knowing about the type of colon polyps, the number uh, and the size of it, really should be very, very important. In the past, you may have been told it was all fine. I always tell patients that you need to have evidence of what it is. Because if ever you need to check, you know what type of polyp, how many, what size it is, you can check for yourself when your next one needs to be. Because we are all have to follow the same rules. This could potentially be very much life saving. Now that you know a little bit about, more, about polyps, I would suggest you go and look back at your old notes and, and, and dig things up and, and have a look whether you need another test or not. And if you don't and if something is missing, go back to your doctor. Ask them about what it was before. Because, as I said before, this is potentially life saving and you are the best person to look after yourself. We're here only to help. This is Dr. Prabhupada, consultant, gastroenterologist, hepatologist and physician. If this information was useful for you, likely it'd be useful for someone else too. So feel free to share it.